guys, thanks for joining us. We have a good show for you today. We promise. We swear. Um, yeah, sorry about the lack of the show last week. Uh, we had some uh, back-end housekeeping to do. Um, things like setting up a Facebook page, which we now have. Please like that. We have a Telegram channel. Uh, please subscribe there. We have a Patreon. If you guys want to support us, Patreon and actually buy me a coffee as well are places that you can do that now. Um, what else? Uh, TikTok. We have TikTok. Um, so all of the above, check our link tree. It's in the bio of our Twitter page. It has all of our links. Um, whatever you guys can do to support us, uh, it's a two-man team. I am kind of dumb with tech. Uh, <laughs> well, listen, this guy says these guys' technical ineptitude is endearing. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. However, who would have thought that plugging in and unplugging and plugging back in the microphone would have would have uh, fixed um, the, that issue? Um, I don't know what that was. Anyways, guys, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have a good show. Um, sorry about all the delays, and we appreciate you guys sticking uh, through it with us. Um, we have a great show kid yeah uh start us off yeah well i mean i have I our think tweet up as far as as far as breaking news is concerned um we appear to both uh be entrants on U the ukrainian government's latest designated hit list um of people <laughs> who aren't sufficiently uh you know pro the genocide of ukraine's entire male population so um yes we have been it's a website called texty um not particularly doesn't really roll off the tongue but um we're, we're we're both there um alexander rubenstein is a person um i am a person as well um allegedly um yeah um and i think that my entry just makes me look cool because it states that like i was grilled by cancer terror police yeah um for my work for the gray zone which is true um so uh, that was uh, over a year ago now um i retained trauma uh so but, but if nothing else, um, it did help me be more famous. Yeah. So it, it, in, in a way. So, um, yeah. yeah. But like uh, the, the Ukrainian government seems to have a habit of of creating these these hit lists. There is that you're going to have to pronounce it for me. Mitro vets, I yeah. think. It's yeah. Vets. Yeah. Which is like a a a hit list of people, I and mean, quite literally. I mean, it appears to be run out of Langley, Virginia, which is also where the the CIA is um, headquartered. And um, it, it, when people on that list end up dead, yeah. um, they are they get a red cross saying liquidated. Well, they ha it's... they have um, Langley. They have NATO headquarters and a lot of shit yeah. in their websites metadata that's so. Um, it's kind of, I talked to a tech expert about this once. It's so prominent and, and like obvious and easy to find for anyone that knows what they're doing yeah. that it, it's, it's like kind of a troll, you know, yeah. it's likely kind of a troll. Um, does that mean that it's not run by the Ukrainian government? Obviously it's run by the Ukrainian government, yeah. but, um, the, the, uh, head, like the location being Langley, yeah. I think is obvious. It's, it's, like, it's like NAFO, uh, yeah, this right. troll troop where they all claim they're from Langley, Virginia, right. and people still fall for it. I know. Like, yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. What can but, you do? But I like that, um, you know, they, 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 we should hire these guys to do a portfolio for each of us. Um, since we're so, uh, inept with tech. Uh, we could we could hire them to do our portfolios because they have a number of our articles that they've taken issue with. Um, Kit, they have Ukrainian trial demonstrates 24 Maidan massacre was a false flag. That's on the gray zone. These are all gray zone. Western press fetishizes Ukrainian amputees as limb loss epidemic grows. Leaked files suggest hidden by British hand in latest Kirch Bridge strike. And for me, Zelensky holds court with Ukraine's most notorious neo-Nazi. Father of Gonzalo Lira, American jailed in Ukraine, speaks out against political imprisonment. Ukrainian banker offers cash for drone terror in Russia. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like they're highlighting some of our best work. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> in indeed. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen some people say that this is like a, a really cool list of people to follow on Twitter. Oh, yeah. You know what they're talking about. I mean, I might, yeah, I might add that, that, that it's interesting that they went for the that they decided to include my my article on on ukrainian amputees because um this is like one of the most staggering i mean there has been the level of journal journalism quote unquote during the proxy war has been um record-breakingly woeful um but this the, 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 there was a new york times article published last summer 
which um, effectively delved into the massive scale of amputees in the in the proxy conflict of, of ukrainians and how um there are so many of them that like the, the, the centers dealing with the, the medical centers dealing with with amputees need to be as uh profuse as dentists yeah. um which you know tells you something um and that there was there, there was like a whole discussion about how actually the fact that so many ukrainians are now missing legs and arms is not a indicator of an absolutely dire battlefield situation it's a sign that ukraine is winning yeah um and there was a whole section about how it's really effective means of getting laid um, getting an arm and leg blown off with some astonishing quotes um including this one soldier who allegedly prior to um being sent to the front line and getting blown to pieces um had never dared ask his hometown crush out on a date um uh, this was until mortar injuries took his leg and mangled his arms and then after suffering this irreparable life-altering injuries he and his sweetheart have been together ever since um and he was this this mangled soldier was quoted as saying it's magical someone can have all his arms and legs and still not be successful in love but an amputee can win a heart so yeah. i mean there's a great great recruitment advert actually yeah like, <laughs> and i think uh next month we'll have uh more to add on 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 that subject um yes. maybe some of our uh eagle-eyed viewers will figure out what i'm talking about here but for now i think we'll We'll keep that yeah. uh, surprise uh, <laughs> under wraps. Yeah, indeed. July 4th. <laughs> July 4th. Yeah, July 4th, everybody. Mark the calendar. We're going to have something interesting at that point. Yes. Um, yeah, and we got a lot of interesting stuff coming. Uh, Kit has an investigation in the pipeline. I have, uh, well, you have several investigations in the pipeline. One's um, ready to come out just about. Um, I have a few that I'm working on. Um, we have leaked documents on uh, a uh, intelligent front in Australia. Yeah, uh, I have uh, kind of a long form investigation that has been in the works for a while on the Western information war in Africa, in West Africa in particular. Um, people who 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 watch the channel and and hear, you know, and, and follow us on social media know that uh, Kit and I did a piece um last july was it last august yeah um when when the coup in niger was happening about how the president of nigeria um is actually was actually a uh bag man for a chicago heroin gang bag man being basically the guy who handles the money handles accountant. the books yeah he was an accountant um and he is the current president of nigeria close u.s ally close french ally um and he was planning to invade um Niger after they had the coup through an uh, international body called ECOWAS. Um, but anyways, some follow-up reporting on that coming uh, from me. Uh, a lot of good stuff in 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 the works here. Mm. Um, and you know, you know, part of part of the reason that we had this break was to just kind of like hunker down, build up some of the foundations of active measures, and you know kind of make like a long-term plan for the project because we're like so overwhelmed by the support that you guys have shown us um that we just want to keep going and we're committed to it um we we will not take more breaks like this in the future we're, we're mm -hmm. very much committed to bringing uh episodes every week and we have uh plans to plans to do so so um why don't we start off with uh the news yesterday the tragic news from uh gaza um as always very tragic uh 226 killed hundreds more wounded i think i saw the figure 400 wounded that was yesterday's yeah. figure so it could be quite a bit more now and um yeah this was a hostage rescue operation and i think that it was operation. yes it was um in classic israeli style it led to hundreds of people being killed um four there people was, yeah, there is a there is an amazing um, there's a clip of these two female hostages who seem to have actually rather enjoyed their time um, living with Hamas, where one of them says, um, uh, "I was I was terrified that the Israeli military would would try and rescue us at, at any moment because yeah. they knew well that <laughs> they, they were likely would Hannibal's coming to town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They likely would have been killed in the process. But like, so that this I think that this was like a desperate bid to get a propaganda win, both for international audiences, but also the the, the domestic 
domestic the, the is, Israeli public or what remains of it because they've all gone back to their actual home countries. Yeah. Um, uh, I gather that there's um, a, a, one of the key sources of injury for Israeli soldiers at the moment is sunburn because they're operating in um you know uh conditions they're not evolved to 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 operate in what do you but, say look at me do yeah. i not look indigenous yes to the middle east yeah indeed indeed but it's just like well i mean your hair and your beard but like that <laughs> but, 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 when, but, I yeah. was, when i was uh sorry we'll, we'll go on but i gotta give this little anecdote because i used to grow my beard out i think my first the, our first episode i had it like that but when i was uh living inside of the venezuelan embassy in washington dc the opposition protesters uh, nicknamed me Taliban. Yes, <laughs> but the um, perhaps yeah the um, that was that was a weird time actually when you joined the group. You re <laughs> they, they, you really thought they cared about you? Yeah, I like, did. No, you, all you wanted was a wife. Well, I was I was looking for opium, and it turns out that they were actually the ones against it. Yeah, so no, indeed. I uh, yeah, that, I, people, I then joined the U.S. Army. The wrong so. people to ask. Uh, but yeah. The, <laughs> But yeah, that so that this was a hostage rescue operation. It was quite clearly intended to um yeah, provide a propaganda boost because actually the war um has been really, really, really damaging for Israel um in every way. And there was this amazing um uh Haaretz article written by this hardcore Zionist where he was saying well, you know, we used to portray ourselves internationally as like, as basically in this invincible military power. And then we've been exposed as a, a shtetl, which is like a, yeah. a Jewish uh, village. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like a yeah. Jewish settlement um, with an air force. Um, and yeah, that's true. I mean, even The Economist, which is like nakedly Zionist. Um, publication, which had the fucking temerity to claim that South Africa's case against Israel was quote unquote flimsy. Um, th th they published this extensive post-mortem on the absolute failure of is is uh, Israel's um, operations in Gaza, stating that it's tur it's turned the country into well the 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 settler colonial state into an international pariah. It's failed all of its military objectives, and its military has been ground into goo basically yeah. like yeah there's a lot of a lot of people have fled conscription a lot of people have been killed and they haven't touched hamas yeah. really so i think yeah that the the the, the, the the this was an attempt to get some positive headlines um there are videos of israelis cheering that they've been um uh successfully retrieved because it despite the fact that they have neither the the muscle nor the um uh the, the the capacity in terms of people and uh, uh uh and wealth to do this they are gearing up for all out war with hezbollah in yeah. the north because hezbollah has been conducting some uh rather hard hitting operations d d d design sorry well intended with flushing out settlers from the north of of israel which is basically captured yeah. lebanese territory um so in that context and in and there are these mass protests by um israelis because of the government's failure to re retrieve the hostages which hamas offered to do yeah offered to return them on october 8th yeah in return for their compatriots being released from Israeli dungeons. Right. Um, and the release of children who yep. were jailed for throwing stones at uh, Israeli tanks. Um, yeah, that it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a mark of total failure, but a really interesting aspect of it, which has now been reported on by the New York Times, so it's quite clear that they want to, the powers that be want to confirm but also massage the fact that British and American forces are, are directly implicated in the, the Gaza genocide. They acknowledge that the US and Britain, this is the Times, were involved in the hostage rescue operation. Yeah. And they, yes, they, 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 they claim that the US provided intelligence on the hostages before Israel's successful rescue operation. Um, yeah, the Pentagon and the CIA have been providing information collected from drone flights over Gaza, communication intercepts and other sources about the potential location of hostages. Uh, while Israel has its own intelligence, the US and Britain have been able to provide intelligence from the air and cyberspace that Israel cannot collect on its own. Um, I mean, which sounds like all, all well and good, but if you rewind to, I think it might have even been in October, or at least it was only a few weeks after the, the genocide erupted last year, that the there is a little-known British Ministry of, 
Ministry of Defence run body called the DSMA committee, the Defence and Security Media Advisory Committee, which effectively dictates what the British media can and can't report on um, on matters related to national security and how they can and can't report on it. Uh, uh, they the DSMA issued a letter to all media outlets saying. Um, uh, the committee aims to prevent inadvertent disclosure of classified information about special forces and other units engaged in security, intelligence and counter-terror operations in Gaza, including their methods, techniques and activities, which is a euphemism for the S Britain's SAS, and we must assume that the, the US Joint Special Operations Command or other uh, criminal uh, mi military units are directly involved in this. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think that... The, the, when you bear in mind that there have been a number of targeted strikes of healthcare workers, but also journalists um, in this in this conflict, if you even call it that, um, the, the obvious question is whether that's being provided by the US and Britain as well. Um, Declassified UK has done um, uh, some fantastic uh, work on this, where they 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 show based on open source flight logs that there were thirty th there have been dozens of military transport flights from British bases in Cyprus, which is not so far from the Middle East um, and Israel since this began and the British government refuses to clarify what is on these flights and why they are being conducted yeah. but we can use our imagination yeah and I do I do want to go over some of the uh, intricacies some of the things that have been reported so far about uh, this um, this so-called rescue operation um, again uh, US and British intelligence providing uh, in Intel, um, the U.S. This is via the New York Times. The U.S. provided intelligence on hostages before Israel's successful operation Saturday, according to American and Israeli officials briefed on the assistance. A team of American hostage recovery officials stationed in Israel assisted the Israeli military's effort to rescue four captives by providing intelligence and other logistical support. One American official official said, uh, speaking without attribution. That's the new term for uh, on the condition of anonym anonymity. Um, the Pentagon and the CIA have been providing information collected uh, from drone flights over Gaza, communication intercepts, and other sources about the potential location of hostages. While Israel has its own intelligence, the U.S. and Britain have been able to provide intelligence from air and cyberspace that Israel cannot collect on its own, Israeli officials said. Um, so, and we have via Axios, um, I also want to bring up some of these mm. clips here, um, some of these comments that this is axios exclusive uh they are tied to the white house very closely um and oftentimes are able to publish these kind of uh exclusive reports based off of anonymous uh officials the united states this is uh jake sullivan um the what is he national security di direct uh, coordinator at the white house um, the United, and th this is his response to the rescue operation. Again, 226 mm -hmm. killed, 400 wounded, four rescued. The United States is supporting all efforts to secure the release of hostages from Hamas, including American citizens. This includes through negotiations or other means. That's the end of the quote. Uh, we will not stop working until all hostages come home and the ceasefire is reached. It is essential that that happens. That's via Biden. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have war crimes, um, because if this is not on its face, just the facts on paper, a war crime in itself, we have uh, documentation of, this is via the cradle, troops hide inside aid trucks for deadly U.S.-Israel operation in Nusrat. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. Let me reload this page, but there's footage. Well, I'll pull up the tweet, because... The cradle is not loading. Just give me a minute, folks. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see here, there are armored Israeli tanks, which are escorting a humanitarian truck. There's the truck, there's the humanitarian truck, and armored tanks. We also have testimony from a man. 
Jeez. Testimony from a man who was injured. Let me just start that clip over. I was yeah. walking in the street. The truck stopped. It was carrying clothes and kitchenware. I thought it was humanitarian truck from Rafa. Suddenly, maybe 10 armored armed exited from the truck. Special forces. They shot me in the chest and in the arm. He was one of the lucky ones. Yeah, um, he, exactly. Yeah. And this is what a rescue operation looks like in Israel. I'm going to turn on the audio for this one. That's a rescue operation. Now, one other thing that I think needs to be mentioned here is the use of the uh, aid peer in this operation. CENTCOM has denied it. And we have via CENTCOM here. U.S. Central Command, uh, the humanitarian peer facility, including its equipment, personnel, and assets, were not used in the operation to rescue hostages today in Gaza. Yet, we also have video of helicopters allegedly departing with the rescuees, the hostages, or, you know, prisoners of war, as I think they would mm. more accurately be called, departing from the pier here. So you can see that's the pier, and right in front of it is a helicopter. So CENTCOM has admitted that the Israelis used a location south of the pier. This appears to be, you know, just a few feet away to the south. Um, very, uh, very deceptive. Um, and I'm reminded of a quote by Peter Ustinov in the movie Romanov and Juliet. <laughs> We've got to get out of here before the Americans have time to offer us aid. We've got to get out of here before the American Americans have time to offer us aid. So, uh, yeah, I mean, ongoing genocide in, in, in Gaza, uh, as usual. Um, I don't know if you have anything more you'd like to add. Um, it's it's a t difficult subject to cover because, I mean, just I, I feel sorry for any uh, actual news organizations that follow this because it's like every day, you know, breaking news, more dead children. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I, th I think is I, th I think as well that what's what's really interesting. And this is something that I've noticed since I've returned to, I've I've been released from Twitter jail, um, so to speak, in the past few weeks. Is that like the the, the amount of material that's actually getting out on what's happening in Rafa and Gaza is minimal. Yeah. Like there is quite clearly a massive effort to prevent um, the, the 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 grisly photos and images and videos that were that were uh, emerging um, every yes every single day with depressing consistency um that the, the, yeah that the israel is like largely ca carrying out a, a genocide in rafa without very much in the way of, of people really knowing yeah. or seeing what they're doing um it is a quite incredible level of control and the we saw this with um attempts by zionists to rig eurovision they are purely focused on on pretty much desperate propaganda wins 
Um, and I think it would be interesting to see what these hostages, if they're even allowed to speak publicly, have to say about their experiences and um, what they think of hundreds of people having been killed in order to in order to rescue them. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the Israel, of course, has in the, has attempted to prevent um, hostages from speaking out about um, what happened while they were um, while they were captured, because often they have rather positive stories. Of there was like some young girl who said that she learned the importance of sharing and, like, and, and, and ensuring that everyone was fed before she was yeah. um so yeah that the, they are the, 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 they are flailing um pretty desperately at this at this at this stage um the, the pure suppression of 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 their actions is 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 about the best that they can do something like this is the second best that they can do yeah. so god 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 help us all um on the subject of countries which are facilitating what um israel is doing and and uh, uh actively complicit in the in the conspiracy of silence around the, the genocide that they're committing um it's our least favorite country germany um next next up germany boo um this is going to be a, a weekly section and i think that we need to be doubly harsh on the germans because we didn't do a show last week uh really so uh, that i am in the in the spirit of pokemon becoming a bit of a collector of mainstream articles that mention that germany is in this absolutely dire economic state and then skirt around the issue that this is completely self-inflicted due to anti-Russian sanction. Yeah. Now, um, the most recent entrant to this woeful category is an article by Harvard International Review, and this Harvard is, of course, this this um, rather prestigious U.S. university. Um, it, it, it's really quite incredible because they have multiple references to the fact that it's the sanctions that have caused Germany's economic woes. But they managed to use distancing phrasing in terms to skirt around the issue that Germany did this to themselves. Yeah. So there is one passage which states Russia uh, became the target of almost unanimous Western sanctions, cutting Germany off from much of its energy supply. And and this is a reason that their economy is in the toilet and they're staring decades of, of, of oh, sorry, many lost decades economically ahead of them and you know this is galvanizing alternative for deutschland um and that though germany's fragile balancing act uh worked well for the better part of two decades its strategy fell apart when russia invaded ukraine and the west began to heavily sanction russian yeah. gas now um germany was at the forefront of the biden administration's push to make the ruble rubble they were very eager and enthusiastic about doing this um, it's not something that just happened, um, and I think that it's it, it's it, I I can't think of any comparable episodes in my lifetime where the entire Western media is admits that Europe is screwed politically and economically, but the cause of this cannot be acknowledged. So there is this in March, I think it was. There was a a, a um, an academic paper was published which uh, effectively delved in devastating detail into the, the issues and challenges that Germany is now facing. And it repeatedly uses the term energy shock. And this was reported in The Guardian. And they, they repeatedly refer to an energy spike in February 2022 um, uh, and the impact of energy price shocks on living standards. Um, what happened in February 2022? Like, I mean, it's a mystery. It's, like, like it's, it's genuinely an art form. And it's really, it's, it's, I think it's a testament to the, to the extent to which, like, the, the media is controlled. That you have, on the one hand, um, the Spectator has reported that Russia's, boom, Russia's economy is booming despite the sanctions. Um, and they re report on how the sale of white goods in Russia has never been higher uh, and Russians have more disposable income than ever. Uh, and this is despite the sanctions. Um, it, it can't be said that this is because of the sanctions and because of the West's failed economic war on um, on Russia. Now, Newsweek at the end of last year published, an, oh, sorry, it was the start of this year, published um a concise but extremely detailed and like you know kind of devastatingly brutal 
um, uh, 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 post-mortem on why the sanctions failed. And it contains this absolutely golden line, which is the Russians have a lot of gold, grain, oil, and, in, and friends, all of which they used effectively to defeat the sanctions. Any realistic war game could have easily predicted this. Um, and there were people, um, myself included, who said at the time that this is exactly what would happen. Um, and uh, of course, we were called uh, useful idiots and pawns of the Kremlin and delusional. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that Russia is not Venezuela you know, or, or say Syria. These are countries which have been absolutely crushed by Western sanctions. They have all the natural resources in the world. They can make everything that they need themselves um and do so at lower cost than western companies uh and yeah the, uh, the, the, the this is also um in the words of uh the, the washington post cre helped create an axis of evasion so all of these countries that have been cripplingly sanctioned by the us such as china and india uh, sorry and uh, iran and russia uh and venezuela have created an independent economic bloc which has uh, the requisite clout to compete with the US and they are increasingly creating um, uh, structures to sanction proof themselves and other countries and I think that increase with, with this push to um, appropriate seized Russian assets and give them to Ukraine this is just going to accelerate it because um, uh, there's a large number of oligarchs um, and, uh, and countries which are now extremely wary of storing their money in Western financial institutions, which was like their one, one of their major selling points. I mean, it's, it's how Britain maintains a uh, significant um, power in the world is that, well, you can park your dirty money with us and we won't ask too many questions. Yeah. Um, if you're getting into the, the habit of just stealing this stuff, then of course it's not an attractive proposition at all. Yeah. Uh, do you want to pull up uh, CIA Modern Germany? Yeah, sure. So this is an investigation I produced for my website, which um, it, 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 uh, it did unexpectedly well. But I think that I go over the um, uh, the work of Philip Agee, who was this CIA whistleblower. He wrote he wrote a series of tell all books about his time in the in in the CIA. Um, one is called Dirty Work: The CIA in Western Europe. It's a absolute must read it's superb um and yeah he basically spells out um the, the how the cia has created german political um institutions and infiltrated german political parties at every level and trade unions and other um uh, uh and other forums and th this is in service of ensuring that ge that, ge that germany is structured around u.s interests um, and there was even people who predicted that uh, Russia would invade Ukraine pretty much universally didn't foresee that Germany would be so stupid um, and suicidal as to go along with sanctions because the cheap access to cheap Russian oil and gas has been the engine of their economic growth um, and in and quote unquote independence. So they've deliberately shot themselves um, in the foot. Uh, so, I mean, yes, because people thought that it, Germany was a sensible country led by mature people who governed in their countries and Europe's interests. It isn't. It is run by a bunch of CIA assets who will do the empire's bidding without even needing to be asked to yeah and uh you want to move on to the uh mobilization ukrainian conscription gangs yeah yeah so it's like the, the we we had a new uh mobilization law passed in ukraine it is um it basically provides for the entire male population of all ages from 16 upwards being conscripted into the military and there are as we've discussed before there are pushes to get ukrainians abroad living abroad to come back to the to the country or be forcibly deported there in order to just keep this insane proxy war going there is also discussion of women being conscripted i mean it's just complete madness but what's really Really interesting is that in in order to execute this new mobilization law there are now dedicated gangs of military conscriptors going around with police 
and violently and aggressively um, conscripting people. And there's a large number of videos now emerging, um, which is many of which have been published by Ivan Kachanovsky, who is a, a Ukrainian born academic academic at a university in Canada, who's done some wonderful work on the on the Maidan coup. Um, and he's been, yes, regularly publishing these videos because they keep coming out of large gangs of military conscriptors bundling people forcibly, often handcuffed um, against their will into the back of vans so they can be, you know, sent straight to the front line with zero training and to immediately be killed. Um, yeah, th this is really, really bleak. But what's encouraging and what's interesting is there is, there is a huge pushback against it now. The average Ukrainian citizens are attempting to thwart these efforts to forcibly press gang um uh ukrainian males um uh, and um there is there have been some photos that have that have been doing the rounds of um uh you of um of of the kind of caliber of soldiers that ukraine is is now sending to the front and they're all you know ancient people yeah. who should be retired not you know facing being blown to pieces or losing their arms and legs um under russian artillery fire although i mean they'll get laid that way so it's a it's a good thing yeah this is happening yeah and i've i've been pulling up these videos for our, uh audience to see all of the um elderly people fighting back against uh their their uh their children and grandchildren being conscripted i think um it's now at the point where they've said that anyone holding dual ukrainian citizenship also must join the military so you can be an american citizen and forced to be conscripted into the ukrainian military um interesting to hear i i you know it would it would be nice if somebody who goes to the State Department briefings would ask them about that. Yes, um, indeed. But uh, yeah, so uh, I think that's um, that's a good sign that people are fighting back. Um, at least uh, it's not all. Um, I, I I don't think that you know it's so funny that people say, oh well, you know, Zelensky doesn't need to hold elections because he's, he's so popular. He's so popular, and then you see these kinds of uh protests happening against um against his policies um his conscription policies specifically um so let's uh let's move on to um president poopy pants as yes call him. indeed that's the technical name for, yeah for the white house resident but yeah i mean it it, it, it does seem that the maybe they're trying to explain away the loss in advance um maybe they are foreshadowing him not even running in november but there has been some media reporting on joe biden's clear mental degradation the wall street journal had an absolutely hilarious report which stated that behind closed doors Biden shows signs of slipping. No, I mean, it's all very, very, very public. He gave an interview to Time magazine um, in which he set, reportedly said a number of completely unintelligible things. It was very embarrassing. Um, he was unable to remember very, very, very basic um, facts, such as whether he'd spoken to Netanyahu um, about Rafa um, and, uh, yeah, was just kind of like rambling incoherently. Um, and this is the guy with the nuclear codes. Yeah. Who the Justice Department judged was guilty of very serious corruption in Ukraine, but a jury would be unlikely to convict him because he has this kind of amiable, demented grandpa type vibe. And it's like, so that 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 meant that there was no point in prosecuting him because he would. That was be... with the uh, the the um, classified documents. Case, yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was just judged that it would be pointless prosecuting. Yeah, he him. couldn't remember um, where or how or when his uh, son Bo had died. Yes. Um. Very very nasty. Uh, you know I um. I think it's elder abuse. I mean, not that yeah. I really care about Joe Biden as a person, um, because, you know, long before he was an elder, he was um, doing, you know, the empire's bidding, uh, you know, cheerleading for the Iraq war, uh, you know, promoting, working with segregationists, um, all of the things that, you know, I, I think that the left uh, has coalesced to being against. He supported, um, yet there were many who told us 
that uh, they would push Biden to the left. And and here we have mm-hmm. him greenlighting, you know, uh, U.S. weapons for attacks inside of Russia. Uh, the only thing that they're pushing is the doomsday clock closer to midnight. Um, so, I, I, you know, it's not to toot our own horn here, but, uh, you know, did you think that anyone was going to push Biden to the left? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, I mean, it, it, this is this is rather, for, I, I don't think the people who were betrayed have forgotten this, but there is a rather forgotten aspect that if you go back a lot of a lot of coverage around the time of the election in 2020, there were there were reports in Politico et al that, yes, that the squad was planning to just aggressively push Biden to the left and make his life hell and um, that w- when he got in and then this just didn't materialize. Yeah. At all. And then like you have AOC saying, Well, I think he's doing a wonderful job for America when he really isn't. Yeah, and AOC is no. planning a uh, a conference on anti Semitism while US bombs are being used to carry out a genocide in Gaza and she's I wouldn't even say powerless, I mean lacks the will to to really uh make any kind of um a meaningful protest against it. So there you go. Yeah. And I think as well that like what what's really interesting is is that um it, it has been said by us um and, and and people who actually get it that what the one of the reasons that biden keeps is keeping this proxy war going is because yes of his personal financial and political interests in the country i mean he was he openly boasted about how he had a Ukrainian prosecutor who was investigating Burisma for corruption fired yeah. in return for Ukraine aid. That he's rather he's kind of painted himself into a corner. But his total contempt for Ukraine is very very clear. Well, he so, was there like sixteen times in the lead up to the Maidan. Yeah, something. Oh, yeah. I think it's like about sixteen. It's it's more than a dozen. Yeah, and it's like and so he he has openly stated that he opposes NATOization of Ukraine. Yeah, um, and uh, he states. Peace doesn't mean NATO. So in the event of a ceasefire, which I don't think the Russians are remotely interested in, um, unless it's total surrender and capitulation um, at this stage, um, even if that happens, they won't be given NATO membership. He he stated that Ukraine can't expect us to come to the rescue. They have to fight this themselves. It's like, this is who you were sucking up to. Yeah. I like but, that quote. Peace doesn't mean NATO. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Was, it's literally it's on literally, the cutting room floor for the new, next NATO slogan, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, there's, I mean, Richard Sackver, who is this um, uh, probably the, the, the foremost expert on Russia in in, in the English speaking world, yeah. um, who uh, is the author of most kind of university tier textbooks on, on Russia. He actually taught me many years ago. Um, he, he has a great line, which is NATO exists to defend against security risk. Its existence creates, yeah. um, which is literally true. Yeah. Um, so, and, and then, but then as we're seeing in Ukraine, it doesn't even defend against that. Right. But, yeah. Uh, do we want to cover the Washington Post? I think so. I think right. so. So it's like this is this is quite glorious. But yeah, like the 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 Washington Post has been has independent media in its in its in its crosshairs um, at the moment, and yeah. the main reason. Uh, we can see is because it is collapsing. So Vanity Fair has this very interesting um, kind of insider peek at what's been going on at the Washington Post, where um, Sally Busby, who was um, who was the executive editor of the newspaper, got fired without warning, um, and the Washington Post publisher Will Lewis um, effectively stated. Um, he, he effectively stated that, yeah, that um, we are losing large amounts of money. Our audience has halved in recent years. People are not reading your stuff. I can't sugarcoat it anymore. So I've had to take decisive, urgent action to set us on a different path, sourcing talent that I have worked with that are the best of the best. Um, and this is quite clear that the Washington Post is effectively the victim of of DEI, which is to say... What does it stand for, Alex? Oh, diversity, equity, inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's so <laughs> so like like I missed that relay, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But there's yeah, there's a, like a lot of a lot of complaints about the fact that um internally in the Washington Post that um we now have four white men running three newsrooms. 
um and they they want they want more diversity at yeah. the top again um well jeff bezos will get a spray tan there you go yeah indeed <laughs> indeed the um the iguana eater himself but yes that it's um it's i think it's just a, a wider testament to the total collapse of legacy media like I yeah mean, you you see like in the viewing figures for like cnn are just like completely in the toilet like people aren't listening anymore so in that context what can you do well lash out at independent journalists right yeah well you know and I, it's funny because uh maybe a month or two ago i was speaking to a mutual friend of ours uh Nabosha Malich. yes um and I, I, I commented to him that, you know, uh, New York Times and Wall Street Journal are kind of doing what they've always done. They're going along just fine. Um, they, you can find nuggets of truth in the 24th paragraph of their reporting. And I said to him, this is two months ago, when was the last time the Washington Post made waves? Well, it was a couple of weeks ago with the hit piece on the gray zone. Um, but... Uh, you don't you really don't see them anymore and it's pretty clear now that they don't have this like um fake Mueller investigation to hype up that yeah. they really have no reason to exist anymore um, yeah. because it's they were very like... much at the forefront of, of Russia game and now that that's kind of a dead horse mm. uh they they they're really struggling to find their footing I think it's the same like the intercept like literally admitted this like they they're in one of their daily fundraising emails they stated well now that people have stopped reading us now trump isn't in office yeah because right. they were all in on that right. they have like betsy betsy reed who's like i don't even know what her job title is but she's editor-in-chief she, yeah yeah she was like all in on all in on on russiagate and then when the Mueller report dropped and it was like a total damn squib she was like yeah. well actually it proved lots of fast and loose collusion yeah but no like this yeah it, it the and I think it's yeah, it's important to know as well that the intercept shedding staff, Ken Klippenstein, yeah. Ken Klippenstein, like like very publicly quit yeah. um, and is now very happy on Substack. Um, okay. There have been other um, uh, journalists uh, who have resigned uh, because of the fact that they uh, their agenda is effectively set by a number of people who internally who have no journalism experience, yeah. and a lot of it is not going near stories that would embarrass Pierre Amidia. Right, your old friend and yeah like <laughs> inspiration but like yeah the, the 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 it's it's really interesting that th these people are openly stating this because it is the standard in the industry well they, i mean so the intercept like they launched with the snowden leaks 90 percent of which remains unpublished yes um they've closed the snowden archives now mm. they've, they've um, deleted them i think i i i'm not potentially yeah um they've lost glenn greenwald Mm. Um, all the other reporters that I thought uh, did did good work for them um, occasionally. Uh, you, I mean, you had people like again Ken Klippenstein. You had people like Lee Fong. He's gone. Yeah. Um, who do they have left? They have Jeremy Scahill getting paid uh, forty three thousand dollars for for an article. Her article. Her article. Um, and he he does the podcast now. Um, who who listens to that podcast? I've never. Mm. Um, not that. We, you know we're so big but you know yeah 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 but it's just i mean you would but we're doing would... it without our video funding so oh, yeah but 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 like i mean if you're listening pierre like our rates are good yeah okay. like, i mean if you fancy getting in touch at some point um you know via i background. promise i won't make any more infographics about you yeah indeed <laughs> indeed like the um well you know, my favorite was you know the 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 um uh, he he had an avatar on a video game called second life which is literally what it's called in Second Life. And you just do normal things, but his uh, avatar was a black man named Kido Mand Mandala. Um, and there's like pictures on the internet of uh, Kido Mandala, um, you know, giving uh, speeches at the United Nations surrounded by women in bikinis and, you know, also, um, you know, in bondage in sex dungeons. It's it's quite hilarious. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's interesting as well because he has like, he funnels a lot of money into um projects around human trafficking yeah and it's like i wonder why well no, and, and, what's well, his wider agenda you know, well, he started doing that after um one of the um hawaiian farming companies 
that he was uh, a big investor in. Mm. I think it was called the Maui Pineapple Company. Mm. Uh, I'd have to go back and check my article, but they got they got exp exposed for human trafficking. Interesting. And they were not able to um, like the workers were like literally forbidden from from leaving. They had to like sneak out in the dead of night and like hop barbed wire fences and shit. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, the Maui the Maui Land and Pineapple Company or something. So after after that got busted, that's when he started this organization called Humanity United and, and started pouring in money into anti trafficking causes. Yeah, um, but it's, I mean, there there was like a the, the, one of his one of his foundations. I don't think it was Illuminate. It was I think it was just called the, the Media Foundation. Yeah, that like they they published a, and I think you've reported on this a few years back. They published a report on their activities and how they were funding all of these rather dubious media outlets in Africa. Yeah, and they boast about how well the reporting is is so it is so effective at like mobilizing people to get angry at the government that the government often will m make moves which are conducive to our interests right. without us even needing to like shame them over yeah the and then it's like he amidia owns the pretty much the entire tech sector in east africa yeah as a result and it's just like it's it's absolutely naked like what he's doing quite clearly the intercept was not effective yeah beyond giving him some kind of outside of credibility when he's like in up to his nuts in the cia and like usa right. and stuff no, exactly. and i, I and, it, and like the the, the i the, the, they i i ended up just unsubscribing because i was getting them daily but like the, the emails the the, the the fundraising emails which are like bizarrely threatening and and, and like say like we will stop Stop emailing you if you give us money. Yeah, it's like a crap. It's like a bad yeah. busker. Yeah, saying like I will stop playing if right. you, <laughs> you know, like if, if, yeah. if I get a payoff. And like like yeah, the, 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 they they're they, doing Chat GPT. That's the email I got the other day, and they they want money to sue Chat because Chat GPT is a, a better source of journalism yeah. than they are. And it's just how dare you? But it's like, but it's also as well. It's like the 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 they've. They always they that they have repeatedly like some of the last emails I got from them were stating like oh well we've got all of this hacked Russian data and we're doing this huge project yeah and so we need thousands of dollars for this and then the end result is like one article about how China and Rus Russian state media have syndication agreements right written, yeah written by the weirdo Alexei Kovalev who was oh, orig Ryan, yeah. originally part of Medusa um yeah left under rather uncertain circumstances and is now targeting quote-unquote Vatniks um claim suggesting that they will have that, that their testicles will be electrocuted by Russia and all this weird sexual fantasy stuff yeah um yeah it's it's very very bizarre but again that they they are flailing as they go out yeah I and think. you know speaking uh, of the uh of the bizarre sexual fantasies of our top trolls. Yes. How do you feel about moving on to? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I've been. Do we save that? Do we want? No. To no. Let's let's, let's 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 do it right, right. now. Okay. So, um, I'm not. Sh I, I I there is an individual called Pekka Kalyanimi, um, who is a, um, prior to the you the war in Ukraine was completely unknown but he's emerged as a quote-unquote disinformation expert and he's been quoted by like the washington post and stuff as this independent expert um he his whole shtick is going after people the ukrainian government doesn't like yeah. and exposing embarrassing personal secrets about them doxing uh anonymous users um and whatnot he's he's good with google yeah <laughs> you know, yeah so many of his threads are just like wikipedia you just up the first page of google yeah yeah you know? but it's just like he he has zero credibility outside a very loud but quite small like internet minority yeah. and anyway um he has gotten a taste of his own medicine in the past few weeks there have been two uh twitter threads which have exposed his background and the fact that contrary to his claims he has absolutely no experience whatsoever in um so uh, like uh, he claims to be this social media expert who's done who's been researching the dark side of social media for years this is a total lie um it's a it can, can, uh, he is someone who has spent most of his life doing um bouncing from university degree to university degree and working on nothing with any relevance whatsoever to uh russia um the first thread 
was posted by a, a Twitter account called Wagner's Family, so make it yeah, that what yeah. will. But it, it, it dug up all of these comments he'd made, um, which in it, so like 10 years ago, he was talking about how he was a huge fan of Vladimir Putin. And then now he's you know, fast forward to today and he's going after anyone who who says anything remotely positive about Putin. Um, he also en engaged in all sorts of bizarre edgelord behavior, like posting anti-Semitic quote unquote jokes, boasting about how he'd, how he'd masturbated in a concentration camp museum toilet. Uh, and so he actually managed to firefight this quite effectively, stating that, well, um, you know, this is, these are comments that I made as a quote unquote young entrepreneur, a 30 something. Um, he was older than I am now. Yeah, when he was doing this stuff, he wasn't you know fourteen when it could be just about right. excuses for. And he also complained about the fact that um, personal information was published about him, and this is a classic Russian intimidation tactic. Uh, this is someone who has posted the divorce papers of people he doesn't like, um, made all sorts of comments about people's family lives and personal lives, um, which are just straight up nasty. Um, so a second thread was posted this week um in which um it, it, it's been revealed that he used to run porn sites um which solicited an uh content uh that was basically legal uh that was like he he ran a, a literotica site which encouraged people to submit f kind of fa sex fantasy stories um about sex with underage boys and girls and non-consensual sex and all sorts of other um uh like you know, re re repulsive stuff um he's now trying to post through it yeah uh it, it... has he acknowledged uh no yeah. no he hasn't he hasn't so this is this is the site he ran with tags like teenage boy 13 through 18 yeah teenage girl 13 through 18 non-consensual non-consensual sex many men with one man many women with one man teenage girls 15 13 to 18 um yeah very very disgusting things and and yeah this guy has made a name for himself um by uh, as a so-called disinformation expert, um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's basically quite clear that he, he, um, there is an, a pretty amazing video where he effectively snitches on himself. But like he claims to be working w with this team of experts called the Unintelligence Agency, which which docks his the enemies of Ukraine. It's quite clear that actually he's just being fed stuff by them. He doesn't actually do any work himself. Yeah. And there is this very interesting video, um, if you could just line it up for like, uh, where, where are we? he is um, uh, at 54 seconds in, he is very clear. Oh, which video? Which link? Of, of the, oh, the one you're on. Yeah, this one, this okay. one, where I've, I've highlighted it. Yeah. Yeah? No, no, no. Still. One, but no, 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 the, the part at 54, above. Just above it. Yeah. So if we... Just give me a moment. Why is this... Here we go. Yeah. So if you if you skip to, to 54 seconds in... So that I'm, I'm the, I, I have a team, or, or I'm part of a team, I don't have a team, uh, called the um, Intelligence Agency, where we kind of do these um, uh, investigations. So there are very capable people there. Uh, I'm more of a, like the megaphone. Mm -hmm. I put the information out there and hopefully uh, it gets noticed. Uh, sometimes it does, some, often it does. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example... Yeah. So there, yeah. there is, there he goes. There's, yeah, but I mean, if you, yeah, if you look at the the, the stills on his face, he he's, he states, yes, I have a team, and then very quickly corrects himself, saying, I am, I don't, I don't have a team. I'm part of a team. Um, if you look at his facial expressions and body language, he's very, very, very clearly lying. Yeah. Um, there is a large number of um, mainstream uh kind of ukrainian ultras who have endorsed his work 
um it, 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 yeah it, he's it, he's rode the nafo wave yeah and, you know it's interesting to me that he's got a history of you know um anti-semitic jokes because uh camille dashevsky the founder of nafo mm -hmm. uh has the same that was um it was unfortunate for me um i was working on an article about him when moss robson uh made his thread and, and kind of beat me to the scoop um good on him moss does excellent work yeah um but yeah, a long history of you know Anne Frank jokes, uh, Hitler Hitler jokes, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, mock mocking Ethiopians and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And it's just like yeah, that the, 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 it's it's quite clear that he was chosen as the SA kind of figurehead for like what's effectively like a Ukrainian black propaganda operation. Um, it, it, there was a NAFO conference at a nato summit where all of these losers who post um um, um under pseudonyms yeah. on twitter like got together and 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 patted each other on the back and you know mocked uh russians russian holiday makers who were died in, in shark attacks and yeah. stuff and he the, the pekka was the kind of central attraction of this yeah and got lots of loud cheers for his quote-unquote vatnik busting and you know that's who he is Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's in, it's interesting that, yes, that there is, um, and I've reported on this for Min Press, but there is a, there an absolutely wild NATO report that was published in November last year, which effectively called for NATO to create a online harassment battalion to target people who don't tow NATO's line. Um, and they endorsed like doxing, cyberbullying, stalking, and there is this hilarious. They have your tweets in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm listed in this, in this, in this report. Um, the author is this guy Keir Giles. I'm strongly suspect he's MI6. Who, or, I mean, he at least has a background as a British Ministry of Defence attaché, um, and uh, he has promoted a parody, a parody account of me, um, which has posted anti-semitic content and mock the victims of sexual abuse um because it's, it's just you know richly hilarious yeah. um, and it's i mean this is like probably run by nato yeah. it's quite it's, it's quite extraordinary um the report notes that keir giles is a failed stand-up comedian um <laughs> which i think says you know um, it's unsurprising somehow yeah. but yeah the the, the 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 report's worth reading in full you know just read my investigation on it because the, it, it it is they are effectively stating that the entire purpose of this is to malign Russia, promote Ukrainian heroism and ho highlight Russian embarrassment and failure, which yeah. was the key media thrust for the first year of this. Yeah. And that has the obvious um, uh, welcome upshot of being able to keep the proxy war grinding on because, hey, Ru Russia's really incompetent and useless and they're going to collapse any minute now as long as it's just this, just this next shipment of weapons right. and then it's going to push them over the top. Yeah. Um, and so... Well, yeah. it's, it's it, I mean, it's funny how they take these like failed figures. So like Camille Dushevsky, the founder yes. of NAFO, uh, was a failed video game reviewer and, uh, cr and, cr and failed, that's, that's failed criminologist that's as well. Um, he, you know, Pekka uh, ran a failed child, child porn, porn yeah. you know, fanfic website. Um, it's it's like MK Ultra style targeting, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just I mean, it's 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 interesting as well because, funnily enough, Keir Giles is a very big, big proponent of this, and I think this is something that Pekka has himself claimed that like, oh well, Russia specifically targets people who are who are um, uh, professional sexual social failures and outcasts yeah. and whatnot. And it's like no, it's, I mean, it's abundantly clear that this is who the British and the Ukrainians and the US go after. It's the same with the Elliot Higgins, you know, our, yeah. our dear Bellingcat friend, who like w there are interviews where he can't even remember what he failed to study at college. Yeah, and he was working as an administrator at a ladies' lingerie firm. Right, just this kind of stay-at-home dad. Yeah, like, and then he got noticed by what he was doing blogging um was was noticed by cia and only six people and they were yeah. like well this is a really useful way of getting information out into the public domain yeah um and he was promoted on 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 that basis yeah they decided they need their own uh wikileaks oh yeah you know? absolutely um, like it, it's, it, it's 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 interesting as well because I think that, well, yeah, I mean, funnily enough, Pecker has gone after Julian Assange and claimed that he's this tool of the Kremlin and all this other, right. all this other rubbish. Naturally. But it's like, but it, I mean, so so have Bellingcat too. And they were like mocking his appearance when he was dragged out of the 
the, yeah. the Ecuadorian embassy um, after being effectively arbitrarily detained there for many years um, due to bogus charges um against him and that that but yeah that that it's it's really it's really interesting how uh, most of these quote unquote OSINT accounts yeah. have when Ukraine's counteroffensive failed miserably like at the end of last year they suddenly announced that oh we're shuttering yeah. or they've been completely silent on right. the um on Israel's genocide in Gaza because well that's not their focus not actually what they're meant to be doing right right no well you know i always had a problem with these osin people as as, a, as an investigative journalist that uses open source information primarily for for my work um, they like to like add this like mystique to it where it's like we're doing some kind of tech wizardry that like enables these findings and um, you can't question it because it's open source um, mm -hmm. and we have like you know these maps and these arrows on the maps and you know um, yeah. but it's really it's really uh, they, they they try to make it sound a lot more complicated than it actually is yeah. um, in order to give themselves like an air of, of, of authority. Yeah, I mean, it's all, but it's also it's also as well as that, like there is this like, really worrying modern trend of um, I mean, this because newspaper uh, media outlet budgets have been absolutely slashed. Yeah, that there the, the, so they don't usually have foreign reporters. They rely have the organizations rely heavily on Bellingcat and um who aren't where they're investigating right just like reading tea leaves and it's just like well we know we can know what's happening in this country because these people who aren't there yeah using google maps yeah um and we should we should trust them and that, that's a, yeah. a repeat for, uh, funnily enough there was a friend of mine, um, Tarek Haddad, who wanted to report on OPC, the OPCW leaks, which yeah. showed that the, the April 2018 chemical weapons attack in Duma was a opposition staged false flag. Yeah. Um, and then his editor literally said to him, well, Bellingcat debunked it, so that's good enough for right. him. Right, yeah. And it's like, this is exactly Over their, yeah. their purpose. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's, yeah. it's, it's quite and then, interesting. And then look at what open source information told us about Buka. You have five miles outside videos of war crimes committed by the georgian national legion which you know was the uh the reason that nafo was started was to raise money for them because they were viewed as uh criminals and mercenaries in the words of camille dashevsky and he thought that that would preclude them from getting weapons yeah. yeah so uh that's why they they fundraised for the Georgian Legion, who was documented committing war crimes, mm. uh, just like five miles away, and openly boast openly boast about it as well. Yeah, like the, the, the their um their founder has explicitly stated like, like we will not be taking any Russian or or you know Chechen prisoners. Yeah, it's obviously we tie people. their hands yeah. and their legs sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, like, and 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 kill them. And it it's quite interesting as well because after that video that, that they posted of them just like murdering like a bunch of Russian prisoners of war. Yeah um just 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 executing them that they were like they 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 would splash us all over their social media like openly yeah and then when like the response was well there needs to be an investigation into war crimes they were just like oh no this is nothing to do with us yeah actually right so for all of their their, their tough talk well um, and, and you know i've i've published two audio testimonies of former members of the georgian legion uh one admitting that there were two men who passed through a checkpoint in the east of Ukraine um, and were had black bags put over their head, brought to a basement and had their throats slit um, just because they blew through the, the checkpoint, um, accused mm. of being Russian spies. Another testimony that said that they founded a suspected Russian spy who was 18 years old. So they, um, they slit his uh, Achilles heel and made him swim across the uh, Dnipro River while they took practice shots at him. Um, and then, of course, one of the most infamous former members of the Georgian Legion has just been extradited back to the United yeah. States, Craig Lang. Um, Your dear friend. My, my dear friend. His last... He followed you on Twitter. Yeah, and his last tweet before he got nabbed was to me. <laughs> Def really? Defending Suge Knight. <laughs> oh, well, of, course, of, course, of course. like and um, yeah, yeah, fan of P. Diddy, I think. But it's like, yeah, yeah the, I mean, what, what did Lang do that he, like, injected some woman with a Russian woman with well, adrenaline? What hasn't he done is the better question. Yeah. He tried to kill his girlfriend uh, by setting up landmines outside of her apartment. Uh, he killed a... He murdered a couple in Florida um he multiple war crimes in in donbass including yeah injecting a girl with adrenaline 
and drowning her while she uh so she wouldn't pass out while she was killed um he was armed by the colombian police to overthrow the venezuelan government um there's like international crime spree yeah worth a documentary you have to like wonder like who he pissed off to get extradited yeah it's just like well because his profile is very much like cia asset everything. yeah oh yeah 100 percent. um but yeah i mean there's articles in uh in in the mainstream media about how he is considered a hero in ukraine and guess who's defending him in that article mamuka mamalashvili <laughs> so of course pink bmw owner apparently. right yeah but the but yeah the, i think that it's i think there's probably actually going to be a lot more of this like as the as the proxy war winds down i mean i think like it, there are in in there was this um this polish british girl who she went to ukraine to work as a medic and then it, she was found dead in her bed in uh on december the 25th last year yeah and the, the Ukrainian ultra is very quick to say, oh, well, you know, there's nothing suspicious about it. It's like, yeah, you know, the, the, a young, physically fit woman just like just dying out of nowhere. Yeah. But like mere days before she had basically blown the lid on how Ukrainian soldiers and, and indeed mercs like in Ukraine, when people get killed, their salaries are stolen, their property is stolen, their cars are stolen. Mm -hmm. And she openly talks about this. And then and you've got, you do have to wonder whether there are people who know too much who one way or another are going to be taken out oh yeah oh yeah and i think uh Zelensky could be at the top of that list oh yeah absolutely you know? absolutely well, i mean i think that you know, we've discussed it before like Navalny Nav Nav is quite quite clearly like an example of someone who knew too much who yeah wasn't getting out of prison anytime soon right and would have every reason to spill yeah. secrets yeah. that the cia and mi6 don't want in the public domain yeah so do we want to do Ukraine escalation, or are we gonna uh, call it a call it a wrap? Yeah, well, it's, I think yeah, it's worth it's. It, 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 let's uh, yeah, let's have a look at that because I think that this is, and 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 this has been a recurrent theme of the Saint Pe Petersburg conference that's ongoing now, is that russian officials um and and they're, they're sticking to this like a mantra so they obviously you know they, they this is something they want in the public domain is the fact that the west has now openly sanctioned ukraine to conduct strikes on russian territory um and uh which they hadn't allowed before this is something that boris johnson in in uh, that summit the active measures um the secret meeting where he was hailing the neo-nazi azov regiment um he johnson Say, stated well ukraine should be able to strike russian territory it's completely ludicrous they're not allowed to um and then now government after government is it, it, it's supplying ukraine with weapons is saying well yes you can do that and the R russian officials have said well you are now crossing a red line and there will be escalation yeah to which the response of hawks is oh well they can't escalate and it's like they haven't yet yeah but they are more than willing to and it's like i'm you know i'm reminded of at the very start of this when the, all of those western mercs who like went to ukraine because they wanted to like really wanted to like kill russians and then quickly ran away because ooh, russia's got an air force and they you know russia took out like a um i think it was a school where there was the, there were like all of these foreign mercs were, were using it as their barracks and yeah. then they just destroyed it all yeah killing you know untold numbers of people well i mean that's, that's like, what they do is they they use schools and shopping malls and like yeah. civilian infrastructure i yeah. mean they, they, there were videos from mariupol where this was happening you oh, can yeah. see apartment buildings with you know azov snipers inside and then Russia blows it up, and they say, "Oh well, Russia yeah. is doing war crimes." So. Well, it's a win. Mean, it's a win-win for them, of course, yeah. because it's like it's like in Kharkiv recently, where the, like Russia targeted a car park, and it's like lots of Ukrainian ultras they shared video of this, but without the audio, because like you can hear all these secondary explosions yeah. because they were using it to stall, right? To store um, uh, ammunition and weapons, and then it's like you, know, it, it, you get this double win of either you manage to conceal your weapons in a civilian um a area or russia blows it up and it's like oh they're deliberately targeting civilians and it's like but it's yeah that the um the, I, I mean i do i think that yeah multiple russian officials have effectively stated that we will be retaliating and escalating yeah and there seems to be this sense that oh well they won't because reasons um russia has openly talked about providing weapons to 
uh, groups and states w with, uh, with which the West is at war. Yeah. So that could mean, say, Hamas. That could mean... Hezbollah. Uh, yeah, Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Um, so, you know, I think that the, the West has bitten off more than it can chew, but they just don't know it yet. Yeah. And, and and to be clear, like the West had uh, every opportunity to slam the brakes on this because yes. after because the British were the first ones uh, just about a month ago now to agree to their weapons being used for attacks inside Russia, yeah. and Russia came right out and said this this means that we can reciprocate in kind. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't for another few weeks that the U.S gave that same approval yeah. so i mean you know russia's it, it it's yeah it's very scary um it's uh it, it has every potential to to uh escalate into a, a a wider regional conflict i mean um you have syria the syrian government on you know israel's border you know mm -hmm. um that's that's you were talking about hezbollah in the north there's syria in the south and there's plenty of hezbollah in syria um so you know mm. we're looking at a situation that could very easily spire, uh, spiral out of control in multiple theaters oh, yeah. west africa being another one yeah. where you have all these western client states with all these um new you know revolutionary governments that are backed by russia and china um it's another another zone that you know could easily uh yeah you know so I, kick off well it's, yeah. i mean i think as well that like it's, it's been, been an it's been a report i think it was reported yesterday that um macron or micron um as a you know this is a rather rather slight individual um that he has finalized plans to send western trainers to ukraine of course yeah. they've already been there uh for a very long time yeah. um but uh this is like formalizing it and i think there's this kind of drip feed aspect of like slowly but sure this was admitted about the the weapon shipments is that european countries or western countries were just slowly but surely sending weapons more brazenly and openly because they were normalizing it yeah. they weren't going all in um and i think that yeah the, but the the formal deployment um of it, 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 of western quote unquote trainers is a major escalation even though they claim oh it, it isn't we're just right. you know, defending sovereignty there is this amazing um about a week ago now an amazing washington post article which basically it painted this utterly dire picture of like yeah guys basically getting snatched off the street sent straight to the front line without even knowing how to fire a gun yeah um the, you know that level of that level of desperation um, i mean it, telegram it, groups with hundreds of thousands of people that track the location mm -hmm. and movements of conscription officers so that people can hunker down when they're coming by yeah i mean yeah. that's, that's that and that was like six months ago that yeah. the new york times reported but it's uh, yeah i mean i think that the, 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 it's also been reported that there are like are entire cities and towns where they don't have a male population anymore yeah. because people have either been conscripted or are, or are hiding yeah. from conscription um uh and yeah the, the the this this washington post article it just painted this very very bleak picture of what was happening um and the and how yes that like the, 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 the they don't even have like the most basic training and they're being sent into you know inevitable they're being effectively sent on inevitable suicide missions just to have people there at the front line just as just yeah. as meat fed into into the grinder and but then it, it, the proper is prop the propaganda message is very clear because over and over again they were saying well we don't have sufficient training we don't we you know we need better training the you know problem reaction solution um oh well the, we just need we need to send western trainers there and yeah. then, like lo and behold on cue it's announced that this is happening right. um i'm not really sure how tra better training would would help um indeed there are certain people quoted in this article who stated that the the training they were receiving in like britain uh, and poland was absolutely useless yeah because these are people who haven't actually fought in war right right so i what I, this does yes is rather ominous and i think it's effectively normalizing a a open formal western presence there in advance of you know like direct fighting yeah um but yeah so much to look forward to this year. yeah right <laughs> So on that high note, um, guys, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank Again, you. we have um, more investigation, standalone stuff for our channel, uh, more traditional style reporting that we're going to be putting out. Uh, again, apologies about the technical issues. I'm going to 
see what I can do to fix yeah. that. Uh, I'm going to smack Alex around like, <laughs> quite, quite comprehensively. No, that's not true. Just unplug and happen. plug everything back in a few times before we go live. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us, guys. We yeah, will see you next Sunday at the same time, 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, until then, we, again, we got stuff coming. Uh, we are now on, just as a reminder, we are now on Telegram. We are now on TikTok. We are now on Facebook. We're now on Patreon. We're now on Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, any support that you guys can give us, um, you know, maybe one day we could hire a, a tech guy because I'm uh, clearly underqualified. Yes. So uh, thanks again for joining us, guys. Have have a great have a great week. Peace out.